Hello everybody, welcome to my first webcast in English. It's about OneNote. My name is Mark, I'm from Germany. And if you ask yourself, why does a German guy give an English webcast on a software? I did it because I found in Germany and most probably in most of the countries, uh, there is still the usage of Information 1.0. And what is Information 1.0? Information 1.0 is a place where you have your lectures, internet and email informations and calendar informations all stored in the laptop. And on the other side, uh, notes, for example, uh, university notes or a shopping list for the grocery store, you have those stored in an, a notepad or a notebook. So what, how is a notepad uh, organized? It has, you have different notepads for different tasks, one for university, one for the work, one for private stuff. In each of those notepads, you have different sections, for example, the courses you take in the university and in each uh, section you have your pages. And if you're a little bit like me, you probably never have those because these are too much work to obtain. So, and um, what are the limitations of a notepad? Uh, the first limitation for me, for example, is there is no automatic spell checker. And I'll do a lot of spelling mistakes. I probably did some already in this presentation. Um, please don't tell that to them to me. I, I don't want to hear right now. Um, so no spell checking in notepads. And another problem is there is no indexation of information, which means uh, when you look for a specific information in one of these three notepads, you have to go through each page until you find it, which can be very time consuming. Another problem is um, when you write something down, it stays there literally forever. There is no drag and drop. And the more you write, the less space there is at that sub point. Um, the space is uh, full and you have to start a new notepad. And uh, with that, the probability is very high that you lose your old one and of course there is no easy way for a backup so um, you could do scan your notepad you could do photocopies of it but most of the people never do another great way to store information are post-its as you can see in the picture but they also have their problems they have very little space they lose their attention and when they do that, they're very easy to lose and uh, nobody does a backup for a post-it. So um, now I want to start talking about OneNote and Information 2.0. So what is OneNote? OneNote took the concept of the notepad and the post-its and put them together in one place. And from now on, you have one place for your lectures, for your internet email information, for your pictures, if you like, for your office documents, for your PDFs. You can all save them to OneNote. And if you use OneNote for the first time, you probably will find it very familiar because it's organized, the design is like an old school notepad. And uh, we do a look more detailed. On the left side here, you have the different notepads for work, for uh, university. On the top of this, you have the different sections. And on the right side, you find the different pages. So it's designed like a digital notepad and this is very easy to use. So first, the software. So what does it cost? Probably nothing because I did a comparison and as you can see here, OneNote is always part of the office suite. So no matter if you're using Office Home and Student or a Home and Business or the professional suite, um, OneNote is always there. So if you have one of these three office suites, you can start using OneNote right after this webcast. So of course you need some hardware as well. Uh, obviously you need a personal computer or a laptop. Um, you can use a Mac, but you have to use some emulator software because OneNote is not part of the Mac Office suite. So you have to use a Windows emulator or Bootcamp or whatever, I don't know. But um, OneNote is really the best use when you use it on a tablet PC. And um, I want to emphasize the PC here because um, it is very important <laughs> that you can use it with your regular operating system. So this one what are the advantages of a tablet PC? So first of all, I think tablet PCs are the future of pen and paper, or like I call it pen and paper 2.0. Um, you have a lot of usabilities when you have a tablet PC, like I showed you on the slide earlier, it is a 
so-called convertible tablet PC. You can use it as a regular laptop or you can turn the screen and start writing on it with a pen. And usually um, tablet PCs are a little bit smaller and therefore they have not that high weight, for example. So the disadvantages are the performances. I put this in bracelets because if you buy a new tablet today, uh, it probably is as performant as a regular laptop. But uh, this, of course, comes with another disadvantage, uh, the price. Tablet PCs nowadays are quite expensive. I expect that price to drop because the launch of Windows 8 is there. And uh, with that, hardware manufacturers were more likely to build tablet PCs and this will mean a price drop for them. And I did a small equation. The maximum one-note benefit is when you use OneNote together with the tablet, together with Windows 8, this equals the jackpot. And why the jackpot, I will show you later in a live demonstration. So organization, the path to the ordered chaos. And like I said earlier, it's very easy to use OneNote. Um, we have our different notebooks. We have, for example, one for work, one for private stuff. Here you'll see one for my MBA studies, one for the university. You have, can have unlimited number of notebooks with you and all you have to take to the university is your laptop, for example. So if we go to a notebook here, for example, my university notebook, we have sections and subsections. The section here is, for example, general, where I put general stuff in and some subsections like then archive. And here, for example, you can see my different courses I take. Um, I really can't translate those to, um, to English. This was uh, electrical engineering I did there. And these are the courses. I'll show you some later in the demo. So when you go to one of the sections, you have your pages on the right side. And again, here we can see a uh, first chapter, a uh, second chapter, third chapter, and here a drop down page, which mean uh, there are some sub pages. For example, for the third chapter, I'll, all the tasks I did, I'll put them here as a sub page so I can navigate more quickly. It's a lot, it's a lot easier to organize it. Teamwork, I won't stress this one out right now in this webcast. I'll do another webcast for it. Um, just this, I store all my OneNote notebooks in a SkyDrive, which is uh, cloud storage space for Microsoft. And uh, I can share my notebooks with other people for university stuff. I can share my notebook with my girlfriend for uh, shopping lists, for example. There are unlimited uh, unlimited numbers of usage for the cloud space. So like I said, I'll do another webcast for this later. So let's continue with a demo, with a live demo. Let's put live here. So so let's start OneNote. Okay, we go to the start menu, choose OneNote. And I already created a new notebook. If you want to create one yourself, it's quite easy. You go to the backstage side say new and this is like I said, uh, I didn't say it right now. Uh, this is OneNote release preview of the 2013 version and uh, together with the deep SkyDrive integration of Windows 8, this is really useful because um, if I say create a new notebook, I can choose if I want to save it locally on my computer or if I want to save it to my SkyDrive account. So I already uh, created a demonstration notebook with a new empty section and uh, I renamed this section to others. And um, this site, for example, is my first OneNote page. And uh, if I start to write something like Hello World, uh, you'll see this text container around it. And uh, text containers are very useful to OneNote because unlikely, for example, Word, uh, you can start to write where you want. And all you have to do is uh, just click and a new text container starts up. And this is very useful for non-tablet PC users because if we do some annotations for a lecture class, for example, we want to have them at that exact spot uh, on the page where we want to have it. Um, for example, I'll start up in uh, PDF, which I did. It's a PDF of my presentation. 
And um, if I want to add this to OneNote, I'll, all I have to do is to use the virtual printer. I go to uh, print. So there is a printer which is called send to OneNote 2013. I choose that printer. I'll change the orientation and I start to say print. And at the moment, one not recognize it that it gets information. Um, it asks us uh, where it has to store this information. So right now it will ask, uh, okay, there is something printed. Where do you want me to pick it? I can choose the location in my OneNote notebooks and I go to the demonstration notebook to the section others and I say, okay, here I want to have it. So how do I want to insert this 31 page printout? This is very important. Uh, please choose on a single page. Uh, you could choose uh, on different pages, but this was a very large document and um, this would have made like 32 new pages. And this is the demo slide set. And okay, now I can start to add information. One out by Mark Kreutzer, like I said earlier, German guy. Uh, for example, I can go to this slide and say, okay, uh, looks like me. I can start to use the tablet PC functions and um, add some more stuff here. It's quite easy. I can go to the draw section, for example, here and uh, insert some more shapes, for example. Uh, there are also the post-its. I can double click here and say post-its. Uh, so on and so on. I can really um, start to make notations like on paper. So that was why I just said earlier, somewhere down here, hmm, where was it? Here. Uh, tablet PCs are pen and paper 2.0. And this is so true. Uh, that's why I do this uh, webcast in English, because I think uh, most of the people really don't know the features of OneNote. So what other ways are there to um, add some information? For example, if I do a new page, I can say, okay, um, I want to look this like a math sheet with grid lines, for example, and I can start to uh, do some equations here, for example. This one's wrong. Or E is gleich M C quadrat. I can start to uh, say, okay, uh, convert my ink to uh, math, for example. And I have a math formula here. And uh, like I said earlier, this has drag and drop. I can choose the lesser select and start to resize it, start to change the page. And this is really a really nice feature if you're using it on a tablet PC. So, okay, um, let's go on. How can we, what other ways are there to add information here? Another way, for example, is, uh, I want to have some information on tablet PCs and I go to Wikipedia and okay, for example, here the Wikipedia article on tablet PCs with an iPad there, I can right click and say uh, send to OneNote again. I have to uh, say yes, that's okay. It asks me, okay, where do I want to put it again? I say, okay, I already created the sheet for this information. So it's called tablet PCs, please send it here. And right now, when we go back to OneNote, we'll find them here. So um, another nice thing is that the hyperlinks, which are copied right here, also work in OneNote. This means when I go here to do a touch screen, it starts up a new web page, and um, I can start to surf again. This is really useful for university, for example, if you want to have some collections of information for different topics, for example. So there are basically unlimited ways to use OneNote. 
if I'll get a good feedback on this webcast, I'll do some more in English. And last but not least, um, you can follow me on Twitter, for example. And um, another nice feature to add some information is the screen clipping tool. If I press the Windows S key, uh, the screen fades to gray. I have this crosshair here and I can choose, okay, say I want to have this information selected as a screenshot and I can again choose where to send it, uh, send it to a specific location or copy it to clipboard, which is a nice feature if you want to make some nice uh, screenshots of certain areas, for example, for a PowerPoint presentation. Right now I said um, I want to have this in the demo other section on the Twitter page. Please send it to this location and as I said, here we find it. My Twitter account is Kramkr. Uh, I only have 42 followers, so maybe this video creates some new. Uh, add me. Uh, I'm happy to get your feedback. If you have any questions regarding to OneNote, please ask them in the comment section. And yeah, thank you very much for listening.